Hey, Rick, you know what's awesome? What's that? Investigator Lodge. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Okay. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not a tumor, so get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> accent red heat his well, yeah he's taking red, but no he's, he gets made fun of in, in different pop culture stuff these days because of his presence because of his accent you know like you know you'll have a family guy parody the simpsons with uh, uh reynard wolf castle and stuff even though yeah. that was contemporary to, to arnold um you look at a at a at a guy like arnold schwarzenegger and you see him now, and of course, you know, he's 72 years old now. But you look at a guy like Arnold, and you're like, how did this guy essentially carry American cinema for yeah. the better part of 20 years? Yeah. And it's 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 weird, because he's not a really wonderful actor, per Ooh. se. And even, even if he's playing American characters, he's still got that really thick Austrian accent. And there's just a certain there's certain like un- dis- disbelievability factor to to Arnold's entire presence that just makes you go how yeah except for that it works well and it's, it's that thing where you know you try to take a persona and get them into film but they don't really know what they can do right so. You look at the early stuff that he was doing. He, you know, he was in the villain, which is a western mm-hmm. comedy with, you know, Kirk Douglas and all this stuff. And yeah, I mean, it's terrible, you know. And then you get the, you know, he, he has the, the Hercules type the Her- stuff. Yeah, the looked- Hercules stuff, and and you know, uh, you got I, the overdubs. I think all it took was Conan, and mm-hmm. and, it, and it really made people go, okay. Uh, the, this is this is workable, you know. He, I mean, that he's he's one of those people that just no matter where he's at, he just commands attention. Yeah. Yeah. Like even if he's not doing anything. And so again, like I didn't want to diminish him by saying he's a, he's an unlikely uh, success story because he's not. I mean, he was Mister Olympia like seven times running and right. Uh, like he, he 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 was a success story from the beginning, but whenever you look at him playing again certain characters, and he's he's you know like in Commando for example, he's supposed to be an American um, guy, and he's still got that really thick Austrian accent, which uh, f- for what it's worth, in the eighties, people with accents punched out and killed Rocky's buddy. Yeah, like these 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 were not. Um, yeah, you, you didn't you didn't put, you know, Eastern European was not what you put as being like top notch American action star. Right, but but Arnie Arnie nailed it, and uh, which to be fair, Ivan Drago was Swedish, so <laughs> 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 wasn't exactly uh, 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 the, the 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 Soviet, but. But I digress. I don't want to. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> that's Dolph another. Lundgren. That's another show. <laughs> but yeah, man, you get into Conan, Conan the Barbarian. You you put Arnold Schwarzenegger up against literal Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and and I realized James Earl Jones didn't actually play Darth Vader. He voiced Darth Vader after the fact, but very few people even realize. Yeah. That. Darth Vader was played by two people. Right. Um, you you have the voice of Darth Vader. The face of Darth Vader is a dark, uh, ominous presence. The voice of Darth Vader is what gave him his menace and his character, and that's James Earl Jones. And then you right. have James Earl Jones as the snake yeah. priest yeah. Um, that cuts off Conan's mom's head as she's holding his hand. Yeah. And it just, like, I mean... Spirals out of control. <laughs> and, and and I think, I mean, even though 
<laughs> even though Arnold was not in that scene <laughs> because he had to grow up yet. Right. Um, that set us on a course for everything that came later. Yeah. And um, him him pushing that. Uh, uh, mill uh, the, the the millstone that yeah. the horses were pushing but he was pushing it because he's just been pushing it for days and he's just like super strong now and and turns into conan um i've got a list of arnold schwarzenegger movies pretty yeah. much all of them that i was old enough to see i saw in the theater wow um i like arnold schwarzenegger was again we talk about jaws in the last episode arnold schwarzenegger is a force of nature yeah. Um he he had he was in a movie like at least every if not every summer every other summer and all of them were top tier yep. um box office. So, I think really if we're going to do an episode that's going to stay within an hour, we probably almost have to go to a top 5 model for <laughs> for, uh, for 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 for, uh, for Arnold. We don't have to stay strictly to it, but uh what's your what's your thoughts on that sort of thing, man? Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be ones that we'll just mention, but we don't have to spend a lot of time on. It's going to be hard to just narrow it down to a few because Arnold's one of those that had not only iconic figures that you just think of when you think of him, but there's also lines. There's moments Mm -hmm. in the films that maybe the movie wasn't that great, but that scene was pretty dang incredible, right? Yeah. So, uh, and, And to me, Conan... You know that's kind of the 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 starting place for all this, as far as I'm concerned. You know they tried to remake Conan with a guy that's very popular now, but mm-hmm. and I gave it a chance. But you know what? It's just not the same, man. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was made to play Conan the Barbarian. I, Absolutely, just perfect. And I don't think there's anything cooler than. When he goes down and he he means business, he's got he's got the war paint on, right? That cool triangle mm-hmm. paint, and he's in there with his sword and he's fending off all those. I mean, it's just oh man, <laughs> it is such a great movie. I, I I think it's really cool, and I remember reading this in the magazine, and then my dad was mentioning it later. It's like who does this? Is that the sword, the prop sword for Conan? They gave him a sword, like here. <laughs> Here's your here's your prop department sword. He's swinging it around and he's like, "No, no, no, no. You got to make this heavier." And they had to make like a 40-pound version of the sword, like it's like <laughs> pure lead, so that whenever he's holding it, it makes his muscles flex so that whenever he right. swings it, things pop. And that was his idea cuz he's like, yeah. "This is puny sword. Yeah. Bring, bring bring me manly sword." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh and so you see him out there in that scene where he's swinging the sword around, yeah. doing his exercises and stuff, and his muscles are popping. It's because he's, yeah. that sword he's holding is like forty pounds of of straight up, you know, lead. I mean, whatever weighs that much. How do you make a piece of steel weigh that much to where it would make Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> sweat to lift it? But uh, I can imagine that's somewhere. That's in somebody's producer's living room. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. like sitting on a mantle somewhere, like Arnold's heavy sword from Conan. I've got a good story for this one, too, because when I saw this, again, HBO was my world as as a kid. That and MTV, that was pretty much it. But uh, Conan was on, and it was at my dad's house. And Dad has a cousin named Daniel Boone. I'm (laughs) I'm, I'm not kidding. That's his name, Daniel Boone. And he is about as country as they get. And he's over there, and Conan's on. He's never seen it before. And, of course, <laughs> and there was one fight scene, and Daniel said, Man, old Conan, he jumped up there, and he put old haymaker on that boy, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so every time I think of Conan, I think of Conan. <laughs> old Conan, oh, yeah. he got him. <laughs> oh, there, there you go, Daniel Boone. <laughs> I, I love me some Conan. Um, yeah. I, I was talking to when we were talking about the Beastmaster that time. It's like yeah. I got, because you say it, HBO was life. Between yeah. between basic cable channels that had the, the, the cut for TV versions, 
the the regular movie channels that had the not cut for TV versions, and then you had movies like Conan, Conan the Destroyer, yeah. Beastmaster. Oh yeah, you know it's like certain scenes just kind of like like. So I'm not exactly sure if you're like, hey, you remember the scene with this? I'm like, I don't remember if that was in Beastmaster. I don't remember. Like Conan, uh, the, the the Barbarian, the original one, yeah. I pretty much have, uh, but I do remember because uh, Beastmaster was so bizarre in, yeah. in his construction that the uh, the the girl getting shot with the snake. Oh yeah, like like yeah. the the snake arrow and uh, it, like it had so much cool fantasy stuff in it, man. I mean. It's one thing to have Arnold be the character he is and the ragtag team he puts together. But can you pick a better bad guy? I mean, Mm -mm. it's it's unbelievable how well it works. The music is just fantastic. Everything about the movie I love, even even the big giant fake snake, looks Mm -hmm. great. It looks great. (laughs) We just came off of talking about Jaws. I mean, the big giant fake snake looks just... Just right for that kind of a movie. Yeah, where, where it's and and again, I I do remember certain certain things in in movies that I see them now and I'm like, oh man, that's kind of cheesy. And well, a lot of them are in Schwarzenegger movies actually. <laughs> <laughs> but but at the time, that was that was the yep. as far as technology went, and right. not not everybody can be Rick Baker, and uh, yeah. And and also, not everybody can be Rick Baker and have carte blanche on the special effects. You have a special effects budget, and you have what's available. Right. And so you just do the best you can with stop motion or or whatever else. Conan st- stands up. Like it you really don't. Does. You say you say they didn't need, need need to remake it, or they remade it. They didn't need to. There's certain no. things that you just. Yeah. Um. Like, they did not need to, and this is a segue here, but they did not need to remake Clash of the Titans. No, absolutely Cla- Clash of the Titans is a perfect film. Yep. And you say, okay, but it's it's stop motion and it's kind of choppy. But yeah, but that, that was Ray Harryhausen's stop motion animation that revolutionized the industry. Right. If you, if you want to go in with some CGI and smooth out some of that choppiness... Then you'll make a perfect movie a little bit better yep. or worse, depending on your opinion. But but remaking it, retelling the story, um, bad it, idea. It, yeah, it's not it's not good. Yeah. So, um, uh, but luckily with Conan, we had the Destroyer and we had Red Sonia, so we had basically yeah. two sequels. And um, again, all of them, all of them on HBO. Yeah. Uh, Brigitte Nielsen, that was, Brigitte Nielsen to me was always a bit of a, an, uh, uh, an enigma. Sure. She's, because she was right there standing in front with, with Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. She was, she was, she was an action star, but she never quite got her, come on, she, she never quite broke out the way I thought she should. Right. She she was always kind of treated as kind of weird by the media, like I, which I didn't really see. I thought she was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh maybe because of the people she dated or who she was seen with, she got kind of flavor flavor. Well, that was much later. <laughs> that, that was much, much later. <laughs> I was talking about, like, in the 80s. But, you know, hey, whatever. They, she could, they could have been hanging out back then, too. I don't know. But... <laughs> yeah, he's... he's uh, that dude's a weirdo. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, but, I'm kind of the same way with, with you, man. I, I think, you know, were they... Were they trying to prime her to become something bigger, and it just didn't happen? Because, like you said, she was around all the right people. She was in the mm-hmm. big movies. She just wasn't, you know. I guess Red Sonia was the only thing she got where she was kind of the the starring character, and I guess it just didn't do. But with that being said, all you got to do is trace it back to Conan the Destroyer. And even though I love Conan the Destroyer, there's a huge difference between the first movie. And that one, mm-hmm. you can tell that okay, just like the 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 guy that he fights in there that's 
you know, through all the mirrors, and it basically looks like a green Toxic Avenger with a wrestling <laughs> cape on. It's like we had a giant snake in the first one, and now you're giving me this, you know. Mm-hmm. So you could tell they were cutting corners. Went with some more star power by getting people that weren't necessarily stars <laughs> and putting them in there. And, uh, you know, so Red Sonja kind of was a follow-up to that. So it just didn't have, you know, I think if it would have followed the first mm-hmm. Conan movie and made it a little more barbaric. <laughs> That's uh, funny, right? Well, well I think it's kind of like, I think it's kind of like Jaws. Again, and we're just yeah. right on the heels of Jaws. It's like, you have Jaws... And for Jaws 2, everybody that was involved in the original yeah. said, well, that was good. We're on to the next project. Right. And even even Roy Scheider didn't want to be mm. in Jaws 2, but he no, was he contractually obligated. Yeah. Um, so between between Jaws and Jaws 2, you had Roy Scheider and Lorraine Gary, who played his wife, mm-hmm. who never did anything after the fourth Jaws. Like, she was only in, you know, she was a character actress. She was here and there. Right. Um. But like with Conan, you like Schwarzenegger was in, you know, at least he was in both of the sequels. Right. You didn't have a different guy playing Conan, so. Right. Um. But then you have probably one of the best movies that's ever been made, Terminator. <laughs> I mean, Termin Term Terminator is hard to beat. Terminator is an insanely good movie. Yeah. Um. It holds up, and like I said, my wife does not like scary movies, but she's she'll watch Aliens or Terminator all day long. I'm like, you don't like slashers, yeah. You you don't care about scary movies so much as you just don't like yeah kni- it's, knives and my guts. wife's the same way. My wife's the exact same way. She she she's seen pretty much every Terminator movie, uh, and you know you're like, well, you're still kind of seeing the same thing. It's just presented to you in a different way, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, ter- Terminator. I think <laughs> there's again kind of like Jaws. There's there's cinema before Terminator and then cinema after because the special right. effects yeah. that were employed in Terminator and Arnold Schwarzenegger as a presence. Yep. Yeah. Um, because he is robotic. His I mean, and he's just the way he's built. Mm-hmm. The, the, there was never a character. There was never a, an actor that was built better to put right. on a leather jacket and go shoot up a police station than him. Yeah, and just that deadpan look behind the glasses and just. Yep. Um, just a mo- an emotionless killer. I mean, that's what we what we've been saying all along. It's what kind of ties all these things together, and you know the the effect of of the of the first Terminator movie. I mean, it's still got its problems. You still got a little stop motion things here and there, but for the most part, I mean, well, they even tried to remake it with Genesis to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. It's like, why, why, why yeah. even, you know, just leave it, leave it alone. <laughs> ter- ter- Terminator is pretty flawless. Like the the story between part one and part two. Yeah, I think you could just close that saga. Yeah, and that's the thing was this, the the second one close the saga it sure. wasn't supposed to to, right. to follow a, 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 a you know like, let's have a third one like there's no third one it's yeah that's the story's over yeah and um but yeah the 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 terminator i think is funny too because you have bill paxton in there <laughs> like yeah. he's he's just a I mean, at that point, he's just a SAG actor. Right. He's not. He's not done anything. He's just. And, and it's funny because after you see what he turned into later, right? You know, big star like James Cameron movies, Titanic, right. Aliens, like all like he was he was James Cameron's boy. Right. But you, but you look at you look at Bill Paxton playing kind of the the dorky straight man later. And then you look at him dressed in the as the punk in Terminator, <laughs> and you're just like, that doesn't fit. Like you, you don't quite like it was a throwaway scene. Like you just yep. need some guys in, in in hair and makeup to 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 take a punch, right? But then you then but, you realize, oh, that's Bill Paxton. You're yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, him he, he and Cameron were so tight. You know, uh, some of my favorite stories are stuff like uh, 
he said I was I was at my house once. And he said that James Cameron pulled up and said, "Hey, jump in the car. We're gonna go see this movie." He said, "Okay, what are we going to see?" He said, we're "Gonna go see this crazy movie called Evil Dead 2. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, and it was just that kind of thing with him, you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, what can you say about James Cameron, man? I mean, uh, but bringing the Terminator to life is is just it, it's as iconic a character as anything. Who hasn't said I'll be back, right? Mhm. So, I, I mean part it, part 2, I mean w- was just so groundbreaking at the time. And how, how you know you, you, Cameron being being who he is, you know, like there's no way that they were going to know that the line right. I will be back is going to be a yeah. cultural thing. Yeah. Um, at the time that the movie came out, you had Michael Jackson's dancing around for Pepsi. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. nobody, nobody's going to be like, I mean, it was a, it was catchphrase city, but like, yeah. like, Hey, give, I need to, I need to go behind the counter. And he's like, no, he's like, okay, I'll be back. And it was just very straightforward. And like, yeah. then he comes back and messes things up. <laughs> I think but, that's just uh, what people kind of caught on to with him because, you know, I, 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 you can't really describe why the catchphrases work because every movie that we bring up will have some sort of catchphrase in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's true, but I don't think I don't think necessarily that the the writers don't necessarily do that. I think no. that's 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 what you're talking about, Willis, and then all the kids start laughing, right? And everybody's like, "Okay, well, let's have him say that again." Yeah. Because see see if they get the same laugh off the off the same joke, and uh, but yeah like between Terminator and Terminator Two, I mean Terminator I was because the first one came out when I was nine and the second one would have come out when I was like eleven or thirteen. Yeah, it's a little so, later. Yeah. <laughs> it took them a while right. to come up with the second one. So, so nineteen eighty four to nineteen ninety one. So yeah, um, but, but we can't. My, my, Go ahead. Go ahead. We're not going to skip the other stuff. I'm saying like, <laughs> the, 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 the difference in mentality. So I didn't see the first one when it first came out. I saw mm-hmm. the second one when I was a teenager and being like just blown away. I'd seen the first one, but like, oh, my God. So, uh, but then that was because Schwarzenegger had been in so many other things right. in the interim. Yeah. When I said we had to make a top five. My, I mean, it's down there. Like, well, I mean, Commando was cool. I enjoyed Commando. <laughs> Did you? What's your thoughts on Commando? We can talk about Commando. Commando is probably my favorite Schwarzenegger flick. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I've got a list running down the end of the page. I was going to yeah. talk about Predator. Yeah, so, I mean, come on, yeah. I mean, but but no, if you're just, Commando is well, I think solid. I think Commando for me was because it was on HBO all the time, and there was one scene in there that I was infatuated with, which is where he's in the little tool shed and he's hiding from all the bad guys, and he slings that saw blade and it hits that dude in the head, and I used <laughs> I used to rewind that and watch it over and over, go, how are they doing this? How are they making this work? Because it looks as real as anything. And, uh, oh. uh, again, catchphrases like crazy, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I love Commando. Not for I, any particular it, reason. I just do. When I when I say it, it's like, oh, Commando was cool because, to me, Commando is similar in story and structure to True Lies. Oh yeah, yeah. As, as far as like, okay, like everything's going, everything's going wonky, and then they steal his daughter, and he's like, okay, yep. let me grab the grenade launcher and just <laughs> like, yep. So like, I've always loved Commando, but I think for me, Commando actually got wrapped up in with Commando, Rob Deal, kind of those early '80s. Man, Rob Deal is one that doesn't get talked about enough. I, dude, it's awesome. I think so too. When he drives a station wagon up, and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna time to fake my death." <laughs> Just blow stuff up, grabs a gun, bunch of weapons. Like they'll never see me coming now. You feel like <laughs> it's, it's, that's the that's the eighties though, is because yep. you could you could fake your death with a with a burning car because nobody would ever look for a body in there because the car's burnt. Like why wouldn't somebody have been driving it? 
You can right. blow up a refinery, and yeah. cops won't even come because it's the good guy doing it. We just brought this up <laughs> on, on Hail Mean because on RoboCop 2, there's a scene where RoboCop's car, he gets out to unlock a gate, and then his cop car comes rolling in, and it blows up. But he's standing <laughs> off to the side. I'm like, okay, how did the car drive itself? <laughs> But yep. it's the '80s. I mean, that stuff happened all the time. Oh, they weren't—they weren't in the car. Okay, yeah. never mind that somebody had to be driving it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> somebody shoots a little uh, police action snub nose pistol at a car, like shoots at it four times, and like yeah. you hear ding, 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 <laughs> kaboom, boom. <laughs> like and no. the thing—the thing about Commando Two, though. Is this is where your catchphrases really started happening a lot, man? It's full of them. You said you'd mm-hmm. kill me last. I lied. I mean, you yep. know, that oh, movie's dude. full of it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, then you know you got the the young Alyssa Milano in there, so yeah. that's his daughter. He's he's over there going to wreck shop to get her back. The scene, the, th- <laughs> the scene where they show up and he's he's got the chainsaw and he's carrying a log <laughs> that he's cut down <laughs> like a tree and he's just carrying it on his shoulder. <laughs> it's yep. like, oh, how crazy! Like this guy is not somebody to be. He's, he, he's not. Well, and that was the thing. It's like I, I remember on HBO again, Running Man. Oh yeah, Run, Running Man was so brutal. Yeah, especially with the chainsaw guy. Yeah, Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw, yeah. where he like fights him and he like drops that chainsaw up between his legs and yeah. he, like when, when he looks down he realizes what's about to happen he's like lets it go and it's like <laughs> it just there's yeah. so there's so many iconic and it's like the 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 uh, was it Richard 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 uh, Dawson Richard R- Dawson yeah where he's like signs you know it's like I hope we'll leave enough room for my fist because I'm gonna. <laughs> your stomach. <laughs> I'm gonna punch it through your stomach. There's so many lines in that one too. Yeah, but it's just like he signs the paper and like stabs a dude in the back. Right, like the little the little network dweeb. It's like, hey, just sign the contract. You like, <laughs> it's so so much good stuff. And and the, like you uh, said, these these are all the building blocks because we are right on the cusp of again because of Terminator, the first one. Still doesn't make him a an over the top superstar. He's the bad guy mm-hmm. in the flick, right? Yeah. So you take this build up of what we're going through so far with all these movies, and you're about to hit the mother load with with Predator. I mean, <laughs> if you're talking about the things, like my dad would always joke, and it's funny because this is in the '90s, and he's like, because Schwarzenegger was the king of the. Yeah. The, the 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 catchphrases and my dad used to to harp on him because he's like he's like yeah his first catchphrase was going close from when he told Bill Paxton to get <laughs> it's like he just kind of grunted it at him like it was in the days before the catchphrase where he's just like give me your clothes and it's like supposed to be dark and gritty and cyberpunk and everything but then later he becomes like the king of the catchphrases and. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Like in, <laughs> like he he, he 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 cleared it up what he what he needed from the guy, so that people would remember. Because before he just grunted it at him, right? Predator, man. Predator was another one of those that changed my yeah. life. Yeah. Ch- Predator was. I, I used s- to watch that movie over and over again. A cinematic um, experience, man. I mean, we that's when we saw in the theater, and you knew you were watching something that was going to be around for a long time. Um, the, the, the lore behind Predator with... Uh, <laughs> it was, gonna, like, after Rocky IV, if they were going to do Rocky V, is going to be Rocky in space. Right. And, and, like, those, <laughs> those two guys started talking and ended up writing Predator. Yeah. And it was, it was written for Sil- Sylvester Stallone, and he right. passed. And, like, the, and, and it's true, because when you, when you think about the 80s and you have an action star, and we, we did the poll, and Stallone and Schwarzenegger were right next to each other, and those, oh, yeah. those are the 80s action stars. Yep. I mean, you have you have 
others, but those two pretty much dominated between Rocky, Rambo, and yep. Schwarzenegger with all his individual movies and franchises. To have Predator come out of that discussion and then John Claude Van Damme was the Predator. Like, yeah. I, like he wasn't a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, got, they got rid of him. But uh, the Predator, that was my time whenever G.I. Joe was probably the toys I was playing with all the time. Mm-hmm. It was military stuff. I was never interested in necessarily being in the military. I just didn't want to get blown up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it was all. But man, when, again... Pulling, pulling that that Stallone Rocky thing when Apollo Creed and yeah yeah <laughs> they, when 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 yeah it's, and they're it's, like yeah the ca- the cast uh, man I mean just the the entire cast of this group is like the only person that is missing is Stallone I mean mm-hmm. everybody else is top notch you know people that I mean it's just, it's it's a great ensemble in this movie and that's a big part of what makes it work. Because, again, like we said, whoopee de doo you got a bad guy, but if you don't have the cast that makes you buy into it, you know, this is a group of the baddest of the bad, and they're getting mm-hmm. knocked off one by one. You kind of start paying and, attention. And I, I love the fact that, that, again, horror movie style, they have the general that's that's skinned yep. in the tree. Yeah. like they, there's, But they have their moment. When they're taking out that base, so you see how badass they are. Yeah, it's like there there's like eight of them, and they take out yeah an entire complex without any trouble at all, and never sweating. Yeah, it's like I mean, he's like you've been you know you're hit, you're bleeding. He's like, I ain't got time to ain't bleed. Got time to bleed. <laughs> and you know on 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 the way in on the helicopter, and they're sitting there just like. These dudes giving him a hard time about not chewing tobacco. They're listening to Little Richard, yeah. and he's just like, you know, this stuff will turn you into a sexual tyrannosaurus, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Jesse Ventura. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, it's like the 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 music goes off, the lights go red, and everybody's like, shrimp. Like, yeah. ninja. The, these are not guys to be messed with. Right. Like, there's this is not a trifle. These guys are the best of the best. They go and they take out that entire complex. Yeah, we, we were closed. we were infatuated with this kind of stuff too, man. That was that's a big part of that '80s thing. Well, Rambo. I mean, come mm-hmm. on, that kind of set set a standard. But you know, it, we we watched A Team on TV, like you said, GI Joe. Uh, all these things are all building up to, you know. Uh, these the well all your delta force movies all all these things mm-hmm. are playing off this mindset of this this you know uh, anomaly <laughs> that we had in the yeah. 80s red dawn probably was a part of that too as far as making oh, yeah. oh, making certainly. you making you interested in in the tactics that goes on in this kind of stuff so yeah man i mean you know I, you're blindsided by this movie because how can something come and do to them when they are the best of the best, basically? You know, yeah. I mean, it just it, it turned everything on its ear for sure. The the again taking them out one by one, but even even the humor in it again that's yeah. one of the things that that makes certain movies yep. they're they're not disposable guys, right? Um, you know, Hawkins, the guy is the first one that gets really taken out. Yeah, he's the one that's cracking jokes. Yeah. The whole time. He's just like, you know, and he's not cracking jokes because he's weak or because he's not a player. He's just, that's his personality. He's just cracking how he, jokes. How he deals with it, yeah. Yeah. And then, blah, and he's gone. And like, they, they just, he starts, they start, it, it, it's a horror movie. It's a, it's a, it's a Halloween movie. Yep. Um, but these guys are not. Like Michael Myers would not stand a chance against these guys because right. these guys would set up a trap and catch him, which they do. Yeah, <laughs> like they they catch the, the the guy. Yeah, and the guy just blasts the hell out of everything <laughs> and just busts out of the trap and goes and and becomes invisible again. Yeah, which is like there's there's just you know and again with the 
Schwarzenegger pops up whenever they're taking out the village. He's like, Shoo, stick around. He's dropping, <laughs> drop, dropping lines. If it yeah. bleeds, we can kill it. Get to the chopper. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's so. It, that's what he became the king of, right? <laughs> what the hell are you? <laughs> and just the idea of him covering himself in mud so the heat sensors wouldn't pick him up and stuff. I mean, it's just such a such a great idea, man. Mm-hmm. It's a great idea for a movie. So, you know, then, you're, then you've got your die-hard part two people, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. Uh, it's, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and that's another Bill Paxton, but he gets, right. he gets taken out pretty quick and easy. Yeah. It's just uh, so weird, though, that you didn't do the thing where... It's Schwarzenegger face, facing off with it again, maybe in a different setting. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's a wonder that that didn't happen that way. Because look at the Terminator franchise and how he has to be in every one of them, basically. You know. Well, well and to be fair, and it's it's one of those things like that 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 separation where you can sit there because when when Reese is talking about the Terminators, all the Terminators look like him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that like that was that was kind of their uh, model for for, right. so for like Terminators, Jan- like Django Fett. Yeah, yeah. So, but seventy something year old Schwarzenegger doesn't look like thirty year old Schwarzenegger, so uh, they look different. The, those robots aged a little bit, and that's that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. But you, yeah. but in Predator, like. Dutch gets taken off on the helicopter, and uh, you never see him again. And then, like right. in the following Predator movies, you never hear about him again. Right? Like, he just kind of yeah. Um, I saw Red Heat in the theater. I, I think I've <laughs> said on on some of the shows that um, I had to choose between seeing Beetlejuice and Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven. Red Heat was wow, right like right then. My uncle was in town, and he wanted to go see Red Heat because it was a Schwarzenegger movie. And he took me and my cousin to see that, and we were probably not old enough to go see that because yeah, that Red Heat is a violent <laughs> movie. Like yeah. it's it it is a hard boiled eighties cop movie. Yep, and Schwarzenegger is not nice in, in that film. Like he's that that Soviet cop that's just. Yep. And uh, with Jim Belushi, who's, Jim Belushi, he he made a career, he he made a career of being a family dad later. Yeah, but in the eight in the eighties, he was like the evil twin of his brother because jo- John Belushi was kind of goofy and and silly, and then John died, and then Jim came out, and Jim liked the f word. Yeah, <laughs> so it was a, it was a it was you know so. He's got a hemp farm now. <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I don't what, dislike that's, that's Jim, but you know I what? I, don't... I, I always kind of went, eh. But according to Jim, I catch myself watching. I'm like, you know what? This is a good show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, dude, I just remember seeing, seeing, seeing. Uh, I, I remember my dad being like, yeah, Jim's no John. He's trying to make up for it with cussing. Yeah, because John, John was on Saturday Night Live, so as yeah. as raunchy as John needed to be in real life, he couldn't say the words right. on sure. TV, so he had to just be naturally funny. Yeah. Whereas Jim was doing stand up and being like, "Yeah, my brother's funny." <laughs> yeah. Here's some words. Yeah. But and, and that's I mean, I like Jim for being Jim, but I do draw lines too. So it's like uh, I've never watched the, the Blues Brothers movie. That they did later on, I was like, "Yeah, I'm not even not even wasting my time." Yeah, so, not, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so you want to go to where he like goes into comedy then? So then you had twins <laughs> with Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito is the side effect. Honestly, though, I think the 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 Danny DeVito. We could do an entire show on him. Sure. Because Danny, Danny DeVito is... Don, Danny DeVito in real life is the character that he played in Twins. He's a side effect. Yeah. He's an anomaly. He's a weirdo. Yep. But, like, he, he's, he's, he's little, and he's weird, and he's raunchy, but you cannot help but like him. Right. You just 
like you, they put him on TV. He's a he's a jerk ass cab cab stand boss, yeah. <laughs> and you're like he stole he steals the show. Yeah. And then the entire cast of that entire series is more or less forgotten, and he's still standing. Like, yeah, I, I, true, <laughs> true, man. I mean, you, you look at the cast they had, and you're like, Danny DeVito is what you walk away with. It's just like, wow, mm-hmm. that that says something. <laughs> and he, he's he's just he's awesome. He's hilarious. Yeah. So we should probably talk about Danny at some point in the sure. future. I'm just oh, saying, yeah. like, but as as a as a comic foil to Schwarzenegger. And you've got this guy who's like four feet tall, and he's his twin brother. That yeah. movie worked. That yeah. movie was hilarious. Yeah. And Schwarzenegger just looks so far out of his element, being yeah. like not a badass. He's yeah. not killing people. He's not. He's 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 throwing out some one-liners, but he's he's he he has no machine gun. So it yeah. makes me think. In Twins, makes me think of the Simpsons, uh, Rainer Wolfcastle in the Simpsons. <laughs> Where he's just kind of like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of, I'm just kind of here. <laughs> and that's that's very true. And of course, that's probably a thing of, well, I I need to start doing some some different things because how long can I run with this, you know? Mm-hmm. And people keep buying it. So yeah, I mean, you got to give him credit for trying to do some. I mean, you got to remember when he started, he started off and kind of doing the comedy stuff too. So maybe he just that drew, you what? know, was was a draw to to for him. So. And give him give him something different to do, but you know, short lived. <laughs> but it's great. I mean, I think Twins is fantastic. We did he did uh, Kindergarten Cop as well, which yeah. is that's more of a it, it is kind of more of a drama. Like it's one of those it's kind of sold as a comedy, mm-hmm. which was another thing that they did in the eighties was mm-hmm. like take take somebody and throw like hey the new comedy. And then you find out it's not a comedy. It's actually kind of a drama. It's a serious movie. It's like it's about Holy kidnapping crap, man. and child abuse. I mean, I, you I, know, I, I know I keep getting off target here, but talking about that right there, man, Last American Virgin. Holy <laughs> crap, man! I'm thinking, all right, cool '80s teen movie with an ending that just makes you go, "What the heck just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> it's not Last supposed American. to end like that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, so we get into Terminator 2. Yeah. Okay, we didn't do it at the front of the show. We're going to do it now. I'm going to I'm going to play a trailer for uh Terminator 2 just so you understand how badass that thing was. <laughs> All right, so where were you when they announced that there was a sequel to Terminator? I remember it was a big deal. <laughs> uh... I I think I was watching MTV, and they were talking about it, and they also said that, uh, you know, a certain rock group was going to be doing a song for the movie, <laughs> and that's kind of how I heard about it, I guess, initially, and of course, then later on, the video came out, and dang, there was Matt Sorum in the band. I thought, well, crap. <laughs> <laughs> funny because i read a, a slash's autobiography and he's talking about how guns and roses came about and all all of the stuff they had to go through <clears throat> in order to tour like they were writing songs and they were all you know strung out on drugs sure. and living in a storage unit and writing songs on pizza boxes and which i couldn't understand how they had gibson guitars while all this was happening but you know. Well, they, they didn't. They had BC Rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was such a. But in almost every chapter, he's talking about building appetite for destruction, and he keeps stressing that "You Could Be Mine" was written the whole time. Like that was one of the first songs they wrote as a band. Hmm. And I, I, I never really quite understood why. Like, I don't care. How soon, like how early or how late a song was written, but I think because of Axel's weird lawyer crap that he was doing back in the day, it's like, it's like, oh no, 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 this was later. This was whenever I was doing because it was kind of in that same recording sessions right. for the uh, 
So, so Slash is like, no, 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 we had that one. We, we decided not to put it on Al- Appetite, but it was written and recorded, and we re-recorded it for the movie. You don't get any money. Right. Like, you just, but You Could Be Mine is a badass song. Yep. Matt Storm was in the band, and then the band kind of fell apart, and yep. they've never quite been the same since. And that that's Matt Sorrell, man. Every band that he fills in for or gets into... People either just it just splits the band up or they die. It's kind of it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like Adam Sandler when he looks at his crazy girlfriend in in uh, the wedding singer and goes like, "What are you doing in my Van Halen shirt? Hurry up, take it off before you curse the band and they split up." <laughs> All right, that's Matt Sorrell. He gets in the band, they gonna split up. That's just that's just how it works. <laughs> There's that behind the music on Guns N' Roses and Gilby Clark. <clears throat> the, the 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 replacement guitar player yeah. for Izzy, yeah. sitting there being like, as yeah, and and it had to have been one of those things where like we're not recording, right? And he's like, man, I I really thought I was getting into the most dangerous rock and roll band in the world, <laughs> and then they started handing me all these power ballads and weird crap, and I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what what am I supposed to do with this? This we is can... not what I'm. That can that can be an episode all into itself as well. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's a story for sure. So, oh yeah. But the only thing the difference between Terminator One and Terminator Two is, or like Arnold Schwarzenegger is perfect. Yeah. The uh, the weird teenage zeitgeist conversations that that we're having with uh, yeah with, with with John, it's like. It's like, no, man, you got to shine them off and say, hasta la vista, baby. Like, right. Hasta like, la nobody vista. talks like that. Baby. <laughs> no, nobody actually says that. Like, um, well, so, Jody, Jody, it, Jody Watley did. That was in a popular it, song at the time. You know, Jody Watley had, uh, I'm looking for a new love, baby. And she says, hasta la vista, baby, in there. So mm-hmm. that must have been the catchphrase of the time. <laughs> it's. But I do remember I saw that movie in the theater. Oh yeah, with um, like with with several thousand of my friends. I probably saw it three or four times opening weekend. Yeah, uh, we went back and like you couldn't rent Terminator, but luckily I had a I had a copy on VHS. Just I owned it already, so we watched the original. Like we won. <laughs> Of course, we were stupid. It's like, oh, let's go see Terminator 2. We went and watched it, and we're like, wait, I forgot what happened in the first one. So we go back and yep. watch, the second, watch the original and be like, yep. oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, go back to the theater and watch the second one again, because that's just what you did. You, know, yeah. so you went to the movie theater. The movie theater was in the mall. Mm-hmm. So, like, you show up to the theater and see what's playing, and if it's not playing now, you just go wander around and go hit up the arcade for a while. Mm-hmm. But then they had that kick-ass scene in the mall (laughs) where uh, uh, Terminator's fighting T-1000 in the mall and, like, wrecking shop. It's like, wow. They hit you where you live, you know? (laughs) It's like, well, this is is cool stuff right here. Let's go to the arcade now. Wow. Um, I did. Yeah, it's fun. (laughs) Everybody wanted to have the little device that john had so he gets taking money out of the atm so, right yeah hey <laughs> how do you get one of those <laughs> hey hey bro you you're good with computers can you make one of those <laughs> <laughs> and no nobody wanted like world domination we weren't talking about like hacking planets or nothing we were just mm-hmm. like hey get some cash so we can like <laughs> buy some popcorn or something i don't know but yeah there's a lot of fun stuff in that movie that that yeah. uh it hit a, a teenager and yeah, well, it's it's Arnold at his height, right? As far as in his movie career, I don't think you could say anything was any bigger that he did at that point. And it's one of those where you know the music scene is is hip at the time mm-hmm. to tie that in into into the movie process as well. And then it's that example we talked about it last episode about special effects of this time period with the CGI stuff was real hit and miss. This is one where the limitations of the of the CGI was perfect for what they were doing with this movie because mm-hmm. him be, him him being in liquid form and all that stuff really works with the 
the coldness of early CGI of how that kind of worked. It is it it was mind blowing how how good it was when it came out. Well, it's also cool too because of all of the practical effects they did. Where they're like, yes. okay, yep. <laughs> you you start here and you end here. So we're going to build you a costume and we're also going to build you a costume and a costume. And then we're going to CGI you all the way yeah. through yeah. to where you've got a small bullet hole that gets bigger or a big bullet hole that like yeah. moves. They could CGI on the edges without having to like yeah. try to really morph somebody from point A to point D. Yeah. Like, so they actually built costumes and um, I think it was also cool with, with uh robert patrick he had a limp like whenever he ran he had a slight limp and so they built the limp into the code for the t-1000 mm. so like whenever he's walking he kind of and yeah. they're like no it just makes it look more real so they 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 wrapped him and recorded mm. him walking and he's like i'm sorry for the limp they're like nope 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 that works because yeah. it makes it look more real yeah so. Yeah, and and I've always said that in, in in almost any situation, when you can when you can marry practical effects and CGI together, you're gonna get a better looking effect overall. So mm. it just it just makes sense to me, you know, that that they approached it that way. And uh, yeah, it's it's top notch. Strangely enough, dude, because Terminator Two was kind of like you say, it was Arnold's high water mark. Yeah. He did other stuff, but that was in the early 90s. And from there, like, he was in stuff, but it almost became either, either self-parody or whatever. We didn't have a whole lot until True Lies. Yeah. Um, total Recall. I, oh, the, but total, total Recall, yeah. Total Recall came out uh, shortly after. Yeah. It's like 92, 93, like... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and that movie is probably known for the wrong reasons because it's a pretty cool movie. I love Total Recall, but the I only things like the only things I can think of is when he gets thrown out there and his eyes get real big, like when he's mm -hmm. like. And the other part is when he's pulling that thing out of his nose. Oh yeah, you know those things are just. You know, I'm sorry. That's what I think of when I think of the movie. Um, I think at that point he'd been oversaturated with with. Yeah. Uh, not not. He he had been oversaturated with uh, uh, lines, yeah, with one one shot lines, mm -hmm. and so there were so many of them where yeah. it's just like he he's spouting simple one offs and yeah, like he's got the the head that he's wearing and turns yeah. into a bomb. He's like, hold this, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> it's yeah. like ah, you know, like this, but. I like. I enjoyed Total Recall. Sure. I, that was another one I saw in the theater. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Total Total Recall is a good movie. It's fun. Um, I know her. She. I dreamed about her before. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 um, and Sharon Stone was the yeah. bomb in that movie. Oh yeah. Oh, like yeah. he shoots her in the head. <laughs> I consider that a divorce. <laughs> uh, yeah and it, that's that thing it, it's almost like it, it, it got to where you could tell that was just what they were pandering with is okay he's known for this let's throw some of these in there that's kind of mm -hmm. how they ran with it so yeah but hey that's just kind of how it works right well then he became the governor of california right and of course you couldn't you couldn't say him you couldn't you can talk about him without calling him the governor. <laughs> so, I'm the governor. <laughs> we will find a solution for these problems. <laughs> it's just like my dude. <laughs> but man, again, like just in 10 years, like, we got, like, 15, 20 movies. He's gotten yeah. a whole lot more since he came out of retirement. He, like, the dude's a force of nature. <laughs> like, all of this stuff. Um, the camera loves him. We love him. Yep. Like, if he's your favorite actor, uh, you just probably need to go to acting school or something. <laughs> you need to watch some movies. But the, the, the guy can carry a movie, for sure. sure. Oh, yeah. Like, he's, he's, he's a pretty awesome dude. Highly unlikely 
that starting off that he would be the person that he is because he's a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. You know? So that, he had he just learned it as he went along and found out what works for him. I I have to consider him pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think that's been another fun show. Do you have any parting thoughts on that one? Well, you know, again, it's that situation where, of course, we skipped a bunch. If you've got a favorite uh, Schwarzenegger film that we didn't talk about, make sure that you post it. Let us know. Hey, y'all missed this one, and we'll make sure that we celebrate it as well. So if you like I... Last Action Hero, more power to you, Danny Bennett. do <laughs> 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 the... The best part about Last Action Hero was the soundtrack with the Megadeth song on it. Yeah, yeah. Angry again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it, I kind of forgot. But awesome, man. Well, cool. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, the YouTube, all of the other places. We're always there. We're always talking, playing, watching, posting pictures. We love you guys. We will see you next week. See ya. See ya.